Hey folks, MasterCoX here. Now when it comes to content on this channel, we like to try and think of things which aren't exactly the kind of material and content that you might expect. Stuff that is a bit of a surprise to you and could easily spark perhaps some new thinking about that character as well as the notions behind them. For example, the subject of today's story beat is that from the realms of magic and the arcane within the dragon world. Granted, we've spent a lot of December covering Chi Chi's delving into that world, but today we're looking at the OG user of that, as well as how they can cope being part of the good team. Sort of. Despite being a very, very reluctant participant of it. Yes, we're talking about Barbody and seeing just how good he could become with this new way of thinking. Or will it all fall flat in the faces of many people, including Piccolo, whom took charge of this one to make sure he would toe the line, somehow. But as we've seen in recent moments, folks, this might now be out of the Earthling's hands. In the last part, we mostly ascertained that Piccolo and Barbady were starting to see more eye to eye with each other when it came to Barbady's duties on Earth. For years after Boo's rampage across the planet, Barbady had to clean up the mess that his monster and self had wrought upon the world. And throughout all of it, the Potato Mage had grown sick and tired of it. He also didn't like the fact the original Pink Genie got to run free across the planet, eating all the ice cream they could possibly want, whilst he had to clean up after him and everything else. It was a very raw deal. But despite this, Earth didn't have to face a revenge plot from the little wizard. Instead, what we saw was him being slowly filed down and getting to a point with his lot where he simply didn't care anymore. He was done with raging against the system because it got him nowhere and had now sort of slotted himself into a world where the best thing that he could possibly dream to do would be to use his powers to make party decorations. No joke. That's what happened in the last episode. However, a blast from the past, a literal blast if you displeased him gastronomically, came his way. And that one was the ire of Beerus, whom had been looking for a feast, but had then become a beast. Beerus and Barbady looked at each other. And despite having never met in person before now, Barbady felt that they had been regular frequenters of one another's company. Barbady felt waves of terror wash over him whilst the cat felt nothing but disgust at having to look at one of Bibbidi's spawn cowering in his wake. It was bad enough having to look at the original back in the day with such loathing. Now this, this pale shadow of the former potato was even less appealing to Gorkat. Speak up little potato, what say you about me destroying you? Can you give me one good reason why I should spare you? Your creator or father, or whatever you choose to call him, seemed to care rather little about your well-being. The group turned to Barbady. Creator? What was he going on about? People hadn't really learnt much about the mage's past, nor the origins of Bibbidi, other than that he was the original creator and caretaker of Margin Boo, and that Barbady had sought to regain said control and glory. But other than that, that was it. It was a curious notion. How did those things reproduce? Well, if they were potatoes, it would require a lot of damp soil, some water, and a rather lot of time to get it up. The plant, you hound dog, stop it. In that moment for Barbady, time stood still, thankfully. Some formerly distant memories started to flood through Barbady's mind. But when he gazed upon them properly, up close, he made a startling discovery. These were not his own, not blurry and clouded past instances. These occurrences were for someone else, not him. What he was witnessing was somebody else's actions and visions, Bibbidi's. A time immemorial in which he, or the original owner of these memories, had acted on. These memories meant something to someone else. It was as if Barbadi was being shown a slideshow of sorts within his own head. It was very trippy, I can tell you. Throughout all of this, Barbadi could do nothing but stare into the void. Stare into things that had transpired millions of years ago and had been previously lost to time and had only been found again in a potato's cranium. It felt very personal, but very tricky to decipher properly without full context. But aside from the meaning itself of this bizarre adventure within his brain, there was fear. 
fear of something ancient. And this ancient thing allowed him to wreak havoc upon planets as long as it served it. As long as it had found certain worlds ripe for destruction. Barbady was trying to piece everything together as best he could. This was something that his father had seen. And now he was seeing it again through his own eyes. This must be something to do with Beerus. In fact, it probably was Beerus. Had Bibbidi run into him in person? Before Barbadi could see more of this past and indirect encounter, he felt the cosmos itself realize what it was doing and pull Barbadi back into the land of the living and out of his own stupor. But the object of his visions was still looming over him as it had done before. In the present, like millions of years ago, this ancient being that had been engraved in those memories that he had inherited, the memories that had been crafted before his very existence was glaring at him with all the vitriol it could muster. Barbary had no other choice but to resort to his usual tactic when dealing with those superior to him, more scary than himself. He bowed very gingerly, which left the cat monster unmoved. Lord Beerus, what a pleasant surprise. I didn't expect to see you up and about. Beerus chose to ignore that aside. He was too curious to destroy this one just right now. He'd give him a little more time, a little while longer, to prove his reason for living. He scowled slightly and talked over the potato. I would have never assumed that one of you would have lasted so long. Bibbidi, if I remember correctly, churned through you potatoes like you were ripe for a banquet. Tell me, I'm curious, what happened to your progenitor then? I never found out, you see. They were so small and insignificant to me. I never bothered to check. Did that Margin Boo toy of his destroy him in the end? I kept telling him that playing with godly power, universe breaking power, was something not to be trifled with with mortals, but did he listen to me? Oh no. Barbady tried to take comfort in that Beerus seemed rather preoccupied with his own musings. If he answered aptly and calmly, he might live after all. And speaking of destroying, my sources tell me that Majin Buu himself was destroyed also. Is that true? Beerus leaned into Barbadi's face when he was saying that. The mage over-enthusiastically nodded. P -p Partially, my lord. This, that pink thing is, is, uh, is good side. The only part for raining, it's harmless. Don't, don't, don't worry. <sighs> Beerus raised his eyebrow. Harmless, you say? Stupid, definitely. Anyone who would dare get in the way of my consumption of pudding is the utmost of imbeciles. Boo let out some steam at that particular remark, but Beerus scowled in reply. I thought as much. I knew I didn't like that thing the moment I laid eyes on it. It looked familiar. Excellent. I'll finally be able to deal with that problem once and for all after I have destroyed this planet. Beerus walked away from Barbary and began to chew on a turkey leg as he was beginning to charge up a small purple destruction ball. Barbadi swallowed loudly. Oh, great. He was now facing yet another Earth-destroying ball of energy. He remembered back to the Kid Boo incident from a few years ago, but he felt like he couldn't help here. That Bull Nelson tactic is not going to work on this one. Someone as powerful as Beerus. However, that thought got blown out of his head when something else happens. Before his brain starts to process what has happened properly, the fighting begins. Obviously, those fools have no chance against a god of destruction. Neither the Saiyans, nor the Namekian, or even the fused brat stood a chance. Even Boo is being tossed around like a toy. Barbadi had to admit to himself that <laughs> this felt kind of cathartic. In fact, he felt rather smart right now. He knew it was best not to mess with the cat, whereas the puppet masters of Earth had gone in without a thought or consideration, and look what was happening to them now. He felt so smug at this moment. But that smugness would be for naught if it meant that the cat monster carried out his wishes of blowing up Earth. A sight pulled him out of his personal satisfaction. Wait, but Bulma, what is that stupid Earth woman doing? Barbadi yelled loudly when he realized that Vegeta's partner was now stomping her way toward Beerus. He knew it wasn't wise for a Saiyan to walk up to the cat, but a human with no battle power whatsoever to do? That was the height of lunacy. And Bulma was meant to be the smart one here. I mean, other than himself, of course. Bulma, wait! What are you- A loud slap broke the silence. And after that, another one. Then another one. Followed by another. 
Barbody could feel the air shake with each flick of the wrist before the crack of the smack. He almost felt like he was being hit by proxy. Something happens to Vegeta. Oh boy, was Barbody glad not to be on the receiving end of that anymore. In the split second before utter carnage would naturally ensue, Barbady decided to dive under a nearby table. Quite surprised though that the Saiyan Prince had managed to actually get some hits on the God of Destruction. Despite the gulf in power still, the idea that the humans idolised called love was actually giving the Prince a major power boost, although it wouldn't last ultimately. A turn up for the books though, but then Barbady thought to himself whilst nestled under the scenery. Would Bibbidi also be hiding under a table when things got dicey? Yes. Yes, he would. Wait, that wasn't right. Barbody growled and slammed the ground. Get, get out of my head, Piccolo! You are not helping! Stop trying to twist my thoughts! Despite the dire situation, the Namekians still had to throw a couple of snarky remarks at him. You aren't exactly discreet about your fear. I could feel it from miles away. Besides, you seem to know something about that guy. Thus up, Barbady was forthcoming, albeit a little bit over the top. A doom! That's what he is! Piccolo nodded in his mind. That doesn't really mean much these days. But hold up, did you really think to conquer the universe with him around? I thought you and your father were more as before, but now? Tell my mad. Barbady shifted awkwardly, knowing that Piccolo now had a point when he put it that way, but chose not to indulge him and instead answer the first question. He... he mostly sleeps and doesn't mind. It saves him work, you see. He is a destroyer god. His job is to destroy planets, but he's an extremely lazy one. He has spent most of his tenure in bed or eating food. He is the worst destroyer out there. Wait, there are more of them out there? Eleven of them, yes, but no time to explain right now. Piccolo had plenty to chew on, I can assure you. But this conversation was interrupted by the arrival of Goku, who pleads with Beerus that he will reach the Super Saiyan God state that the cat had been dreaming of since the Oracle had told him about it in decades ago, and will give him a proper challenge, just so that the Earth would be spared. Son Goku is even more brash in this timeline and more foolish than Barbadi could have ever anticipated. It's almost as if since his time with Boo, Goku started to act way more impulsively, childish-like, less considerate to those than before. What was going on here? Barbody, we were wondering the same thing, to be fair. Does he really want to rely on some stupid monkey prophecy that probably won't work? Wait, did he just... No. He used up the wish to use Shenron as an encyclopedia? How droll. And as such, they learned that the Super Saiyan God was a thing. Who could have thought that? Barbody would have eaten his own hat if he had one. But those fools hadn't thought about the obvious issue. They're one Saiyan short. Now they're doomed. Barbody could of course think about some kind of duplication spell, but that would take longer than Beerus' patience would allow. But then something catches his attention, and that something came from Videl. Wait, there's one more in the oven. They are too lucky for his liking. But if this had to ensure his continued existence, he wasn't going to complain. But the question is though, should he tell her he knows? Uh, oh, okay, no, wait, no, no, she's telling everyone. Okay, no, he's good. Whew. Barbody watched as they gathered together, held hands and... That's it? That's all it takes to create a Super Saiyan God? Of course, there was some pure heart nonsense as well, but Barbody never really bought into that sort of thing. And after all the previous incantation spells that he knew about, this was something really primitive, but hey, to be fair, those Saiyan monkeys were primitive, so I guess it checks out. And here we go. Son Goku is going to fight Beerus, and the fight is unlike anything Barbadi had ever seen in his life. And every time someone had expanded his expectations, it was these people. Are you all right? Piccolo confronted him, also watching the fight. <laughs> As if you care, Piccolo rolled his eyes at the usual exchange between them. Spare me that attitude. You look pretty shaken up. Barbadi glared angrily at the Namekian. Don't you get it? Didn't you listen to what I told you? We were facing a world destroyer. Of course I would be shaken up. I get it. He's pretty powerful. But you seemed shaken to the core. Like you'd met personally before. What are you trying to imply? Piccolo looked at the two fighters in the sky. That there might be more to your fear than you realize. That you don't know about yet. 
Like something is locked up inside of you and you don't know the full story. It's just a healthy survival instinct, that's all it is. You need not concern yourself with things that you do not understand, nor can begin to comprehend. Are you sure about that? I get the feeling you're just as clueless. Poverty looked at Beerus. The very sight of this silhouette made him cower in fear. He hated to admit it, but the Namekian was kind of right. He was absolutely terrified right now, uncharacteristically so. He wasn't the most fearless being, he would admit that, but this? This submissiveness towards a god of destruction was... Imprinted on you? Will you stop reading my mind? Bobbity shrieked into the ether. And hide your thoughts better. Seriously, they're all over the place. Always have been. I thought you would have done a better job at trying to mask them. Dende could read them as well. Then they nodded. <laughs> Don't worry. I chose to ignore most of the nasty stuff. Which is almost all of it, but... Yeah, I ignored it. <sighs> Don't get your hopes up too high, Guardian. The duel between Goku and Beerus had its ups and downs. And when it seemed that the cat god had triumphed, he pretended to fall asleep, quite impressed by the whole thing. Barbody could catch that bluff. Did this... Did this Saiyan oath just sway a god of destruction out of destroying something? Barbody looked at Goku with certain wonderment and a hint of fear. If he can do that now, his own plans might be compromised. Oh, and the fact that he thought too loudly may also be problematic, as he has noticed the expressions on the faces of the two Namekians beside him. <laughs> just kidding! And as everything was said and done, everyone realized that Goku was watching the party being wrecked by Beerus the whole time, everyone comedically retaliating at the Saiyan, with even Barbody getting in on the fun. But unbeknownst to him, something familiar has awakened in a forgotten tower on an abandoned planet. It seems that the recent actions of this one had affected some old power, as a short figure about the same size as Barbody had woken up. As of yet, our wizard hasn't sensed it, but the being felt rather curious about the reason of its awakening. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now. So what do you folks think? Are we about to see a yet another blast from the past get in the way of Barbadie's resurgence? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I will see you in the next video. Catch you later!